Hello my friends, this is Chuck Benton. I am an instructor of anatomy and physiology at Madison College. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the uh, online resources that I have developed to introduce you to the lab material. I refer to these as pre-labs because you are to complete these activities before you attend our in-person lab. Now in the case of our first lab, we're not actually gonna meet in person. So you'll probably notice that I refer to this particular lab as an online lab because we never actually meet in the lab. The first lab doesn't really require uh, the use of any of the models that are uh, in the physical lab and typically due to the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday uh, or um, Labor Day, only uh, half the students actually come to class when we're actually having lab the first week. So it seemed appropriate just to put your first lab completely online. So uh, for your first lab, we're never, we're not going to actually meet in person for that lab. And so I refer to this first lab as an online lab, but from here on out, we'll be meeting for lab uh, in lab and these online activities you should complete before coming to lab and so I refer to them as pre-labs. So let's talk about how I have organized the material for your pre-labs and how you're to uh, work systematically through these pre-labs to uh, become familiar with the material. So if you look on the left, you'll see the navigation panel and it lists each page of the pre-lab. And basically, I cover a separate topic on each page. And I have organized the topics in the same chronological order that you'll find them in your lab manual. So if you were to look at your lab manual for this first lab, which is orientation to human body, you'd see that the first topic is directional terminology and then it moves into regional terms and then the abdominal pelvic quadrants and regions and so forth and so on. Now let's look at how I cover each topic on each page. So I'm going to click on directional terminology and what you'll see is I list several steps that you are to take in order to become familiar with directional terminology. Step one, you read the material in your lab manual and or your textbook. After reading the material, you then watch a video that I have completed, basically an online lecture on that topic. And then step three, complete the learning activity that I have below. And sometimes there'll be a step four, not always, but sometimes there'll be a step four. And then in this case, step four is you completing some practice questions which are in your lab manual on page 12. And basically these are the steps, the procedures that you'll follow on each page. So on each page you'll be reading the material, to in you'll be watching a video where I lecture on the material, and then you will then engage in active learning that's going to help you re really learn the material, uh, or begin to learn the material I should say, which where you'll actually be doing some uh, active learning where you're clicking or in the case of um, these practice questions you're actually answering those questions in your lab manual all right and so you'll just be following those same procedures for every topic I'll just click on another one just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about all right so this is body planes and sections again I tell you where to go in your lab manual 
and sometimes your textbook to read <clears throat> to read on the material and then watch an online video or online lecture where I discuss the material and then you engage in active learning where you're practicing the material. The purpose of the pre-lab is to simply familiarize your material you with with the material you this helps you become familiar with the material it is not designed and I want to be clear about this it is not designed for you to master the material mastering something requires that you practice the pre-lab is not designed for practice it's designed to introduce you to the material you complete the pre-labs prior to uh, walking in the lab so that you come in uh, with some exposure to the information so that you can work efficiently and effectively uh, in the short amount of time that you're going to actually spend in lab. After you leave lab, you then have to engage in some activities that allow you to practice and master the material. Notice that the last page is practice, learn, and master. And that will always be the last page of all your pre-labs. So after you finish your pre-labs, after you attend lab, you then need to practice the material because that's the only way for you to learn the material. And if I can click on this thing, right, it'll take you to the practice, learn, and master page. I'll discuss the learning lab in class. Uh, the learning lab is a lab that we have set aside uh, for students to go in and, and practice the material. You'll have access to the same models of human anatomy, skeletons, uh, microscopes, etc. that you actually have in lab so that you can practice and master the material. In addition, I have created a Quizlet classroom where you'll also have access to images of all the models, skeletons, bones, etc. Uh, that you used in lab. This link will take you to Quizlet and I've also pro uh, provided you a tutorial video which will show you how to effectively use Quizlet to learn and master the material. In some cases I have found additional resources that you can use to learn the material and if ever uh, that is the situation I'll have uh, also an additional uh, resources heading with some links to those additional resources. Now that you have a basic understanding of how you are to use the pre-labs and how I have organized and designed the pre-labs, let's talk specifically about the content for your first lab, which is orientation to human body. What you're looking at here is the first page of that lab, which is your study guide. So for all of the labs, the very first page in your lab annual will be the study guide. Your study guide is your friend. It lists all the required resources and all the learning objectives. So basically everything you have to know is found on your study guide. I tell students all the time, if it's on your study guide, you have to know it. If it's not on your study guide, guess what? You don't have to know it. So your study guide, use it as a checklist. By the time you leave lab, make sure you have seen everything that's on your study guide. And if there's something you couldn't find in lab or something you didn't understand that's on your study guide, make sure you ask another student or you ask me. One thing I want to point out under required resources, um, you will not or I will not be using Pearson's Mastering a and P, and that is because students have to pay additional money uh, in order to 
uh, use that online service. Instead, I'm using Quizlet because Quizlet is free for you. Uh, and so uh, I won't be using Pearson's Mastering NP, I'll be using Quizlet instead. Anatomy and physiology has its own language. Special terminology that is used to prevent misunderstandings or miscommunications between health professionals or scientists. There are very specific terms that can describe a position on the body or on an organ, directions from one specific location on the body to another, very specific terms that refer to regions on the body. Physiological conditions are described using very specific terms. For example, we can refer to a high blood sugar level as hyperglycemia. And there are very specific terminology used to describe or refer to structures. It is very important that you master this language. First, subsequent chapters in your book are going to use this language in context and assume that you understand it. And if you don't, it's going to be very difficult for you to comprehend your textbook. Second, many students taking this course will be going on to programs in the health fields and then eventually into careers in the health fields. And what you will find is that both in your healthcare programs and also in your careers, this terminology really is used daily. So it is important that you commit yourself to learning this language, not only to be successful in this course, but also because you're going to use these terms over and over again in your health programs and also in your uh, professions. In this lab, you will learn to understand and use this terminology correctly.